Today I'm going to be sharing my top 10 tips for quilting on a domestic sewing machine. So to start with, for my tip number one, it's going to be using the correct foot on your machine for the method of quilting that you are going to be doing on your project. So what do I mean by that? Well, when I first started trying to quilt quilts on a domestic sewing machine, I would just use the piecing foot for everything. So I had a quarter inch foot on my machine and I would try to do wavy lines across my quilt. I would try to sew straight lines with it and it just wasn't the best foot to be using for the job. So I'm gonna show you my favorite feet that I have for my sewing machine that I like to use for different methods of quilting. So let's take a closer look at them. So the first foot that I use the most is a walking foot on my machine. And this foot is nice because it kind of moves a little bit more than other feet. It's kind of has a spring in here that moves it along and that really helps get over the bulk at seams smoothly and not tighten up those stitches and slow down your movement across a straight line that you are quilting on a on a quilt now you can also use this walking foot to do kind of not tight wavy lines but maybe looser wavy lines but i find that it works best for straight line quilting now that's not the only thing you could use it for, like I said, but it is what I prefer using the walking foot for. Now I also have a free motion foot here. So this is when you would lower your feed dogs on your sewing machine and use your hand movements to move your quilt around to get the design that you want. This is the perfect foot for that because you can kind of see all the way around it a lot easier. You don't have the bulk of say a walking foot in your way and the opening there makes it really nice to see where you are stitching. You can look past to see the path you want to go. And it is the perfect, perfect foot for free motion quilting. Now, if you want a free motion quilt, but use rulers to help get straight lines, then you might want to look into seeing if your mas machine has a ruler foot attachment. You can see that the bottom here is a little bit wider and it makes it perfect for butting right up against the side of a ruler so that you can move around and get those straight lines. If you try to use a ruler with your other foot that has kind of a narrower profile, it might move up on top of it, break a needle because your your rule um, your sewing came up on top of the hard acrylic, or your foot may go under and you're not going to get those straight lines you're looking for. So here are my favorite feet for quilting. For my tip number two, I would recommend using some grippy gloves for quilting. Now these gloves have some grip on the fingers on all of them and that just helps me move the quilt around smoothly because my hand isn't slipping across the fabric. There are a lot of different versions of these gloves. Some of them only cover a few fingers. Some like mine cover all of them. You know, it's just gonna depend on what you like to use as you quilt. I put both on when I am straight line quilting, but when I am using rulers, I put one on the hand that is only on the quilt and I don't wear a glove on the hand that is holding the ruler. That is just what I found works best for me, but I highly recommend using some sort of version for when you're quilting so that you get a nice flow and aren't skipping your hand over the fabric so you can get nice even lines. For my tip number three, I would say make sure you have enough lighting where you are quilting. Whether that mean you get some of those strip LED lights and put them under the throat of your machine, whether you have one of the lights that come over your machine, or maybe the room you're in just has enough natural light from a good window or from the lighting above, just make sure that you can see your project really, really well so that you are confident that you are quilting where you want to be quilting on that quilt that you spent so much time piecing. For my tip number four, I'm going to say try out different methods for how you like to get all of that quilt under the throat of your machine. Now we all know that not all domestic machines are made the same. Some have a lot of throat space, some don't have a ton of throat space. So you're just gonna have to figure out different methods that work for you for getting all that quilt 
into that throat area to the right of your machine. Now, for me, I use two different methods and it depends on which way I'm quilting. What does that mean? So if I'm straight line quilting, I like to roll up the quilt and put it through the throat area of the machine. That way I can just feed everything through in the row that I am just straight line quilting. It makes it really easy for me. But if I am free motion quilting and I'm gonna be moving around the quilt, I like to just bunch up the quilt into the throat of the machine rather than taking the time to roll it because I wanna get everything moving and I, if I'm in a flow, I wanna keep everything moving and if I have to roll or unroll the quilt, that's just going to distract me from the flow of the design that I am quilting. So try out different methods and see what works the best for you, but you're going to want to have a game plan for how you're getting everything into the throat of your machine as you're quilting. Now for tip number five, I want you to assess your quilting space and see if you have enough room behind your machine and to the left of your machine to hold the quilt that you're going to be quilting. And why I'm saying this is because you do not want that quilt to be dragging off the side of your table or behind you and it'll change how your stitch length looks. If you have a lot of drag to the side, you're going to see your needle pulling and those stitches aren't going to be nice and even. So make sure ahead of time that you have enough space behind your machine or to the side of your machine. Now for me, I have a, a table behind the table my machine is actually set up on and that table stays there permanently. Often it's holding a bunch of projects that need to get made, made but when I'm quilting, I'd move those off so that I have enough room for the quilt to get pushed back there as I'm feeding it through the machine. And to the left of my machine, when I am quilting, if it's a larger piece, I have a fold out table that I set up so that it can hold all the quilt to the left of the machine. If you feel like you don't have enough space to the left, I would suggest getting a fold out table like I have. That way it's not in your way all the time. It's just there when you are going to sit down to quilt and it's a lot more budget friendly than getting those one of those big fancy quilting tables at least for now maybe one day that will be in the cards but for now i just lay out a fold out table and it works well for me now for my tip number six this one is one that took me a lot of time to figure out how to make it work for me and that is to plan your path that you want to quilt now, what do I mean by that? So when I would quilt a row across a quilt and use rulers or free motion, I, or even a, a square area, however I wanted to quilt it, I wouldn't plan it out. I would know the design I wanted, but I would just go into the block or the row and just kind of try to make it work. So that meant that I would have to backtrack a lot and I didn't love how going back over stitches looked completely. So what I started doing was kind of grabbing a notebook, drawing out the quilt, quilt design that I wanted to put in that block, and I would plan a way to start quilting in it that would eliminate me having to backtrack. So let me kind of show you what I mean. So here's the quilt that I have been working on quilting. And you can see I have a some squares that are kind of on point across here and I have some that have a four patch in the center and some that have an open area with a lot of negative space that I wanted to get a little extra quilting in. So on the four square patch I knew that I wanted to just outline the square and on this particular square I wanted to do a little extra quilting in it. So what I did was draw out the square that I wanted a little extra quilting in because I knew already from quilting in the past that if I wanted to outline the square here that if I started at the point here and came around all the way to where I started I would have to go over the square again I already knew I didn't want to do that so what I knew I would have to do is start at this point here and just do the top half of the square and then I needed to figure out what my path would be within this, this particular square. So I drew out that square so I could kind of sketch through and figure out a plan. And you can see I did it a few times to try to figure out what I was going to do. Now here, what I figured out was that the best thing to do would to be to draw some equally distanced dots 
on both sides so that I can use my ruler to get to those dots. Now, when I came in here and started, I knew I was gonna come down, up, down, up, and then outline the side of this square. So I had it drawn out where I was coming in, down, up, down, up, and then come down the side of the square. And then I would exit out and go up along outlining the top of the square and finish off the whole row that way. Now, when I came back to finish off all of this quilting, I would outline the bottom of the square and then go in the other direction, finishing off these elongated diamonds and along the side. And that's what I drew here. I would come back in, hit those dots that I didn't hit before and come up the side so I can finish off the quilting. And drawing it out has really worked very well to get my quilting to look a lot better, to not have to backtrack any, and it has really saved me a lot of stress. Now, something nice that drawing this out is also, you're going to get that movement. So you have it kind of ingrained in your head of how you're going to be completing your blocks. This works really well if you're especially doing swirls or things like that. You're kind of practicing that movement and it'll translate into how you're moving your quilt around. So even with this straight line quilting, even if you already know the path you wanna take, drawing it out may help because when you come here and start quilting, you already know you're going to the first dot, down to the middle, up to the third dot and down. And you've practiced it over and over. And so you're not going to accidentally skip a dot and get the wrong design. Hopefully that makes sense. But this has really helped me a lot by planning out my quilting, by sketching it out. So now you have the correct foot on your machine for the quilting you wanna do. You have your lighting all set up and you have your space all planned out so that you have enough room so your quilt isn't dragging. But what do you do with all the quilt that is sitting in front of you and in your way and dragging against the table? So for my tip number seven, it's going to be talking to you about how I situate the quilt up over my shoulder and in front of my body so that it isn't dragging down into my lap or getting caught on the table. Make sure you have your seat set up properly so that you're not slouching forward and hurting your shoulders and back any more than you already might be pulling up all that quilt up on your shoulder. But I'm telling you, that is the best way that I have found out to get that quilt up out of your way and getting caught on the table that's up on the shoulder. That is the best way I have found. If you found another way that works better for you, please leave me a comment below. But that is how I have always done it. I drag it all up on my shoulder and then slowly I keep moving it off as I move the quilt along. All right, so for my tip number eight, and this one is going to seem like a no brainer and it really kind of is, but practice, 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 practice. Even if you think it's just gonna turn out terrible, practice. Anytime you have some extra batting and fabric laying around from another project, sandwich it together and practice. And it isn't just for building confidence, but I say it's also for deciding what speed when you're free motion quilting your hand should move to get the stitch length you de desire. And it's also for testing out different stitch lengths, even when you're just straight stitching to see what appeals to you the most. So practice, practice, practice. It'll really help you build those different skills and make sure you're getting the desired quilt that you are wanting. Okay, now for tip number nine, this one is even hard for me, but I promise you, if you follow this tip, you are going to be much happier. Now for tip number nine, I'm going to say, resist the urge to stop, no, yeah, resist the urge to stop when you aren't liking how your quilting is turning out on your project. Resist that urge because if you just finish your quilting and look at it as a whole, I promise you it is not going to look as bad as you thought it would. It will not look as bad as you thought it would. So just so be it. If you see something that isn't turning out the way you think it should, or if you're getting a few skipped stitches, 
the stitches are a little bit longer or shorter than the rest of them in that, that area you're working on, resist the urge of getting out the seam ripper and pulling them out. Resist the urge of just stopping and giving up for now. Just keep going with the project. Take a deep breath, relax, and realize that if you keep going and look at your project as a whole, you're probably not even going to notice where that little mess up that you think happened is. So now for my tip number 10, this one is to jump in. Just jump in and start quilting. Even if you don't think you're ready yet, even if you don't think you have the proper machine, even if you, I don't know, I don't know what else it could be, but just jump in. You may not know everything that goes along with quilting your quilt or anything like that. I know I didn't when I got started. Just jump in. I promise you, no matter what machine you have, you can make it work. When I first started quilting my quilt sandwiches together, I was on a brother machine that I purchased from Walmart and all I quilted on it was smaller wall hangings, tote bags, and you know, baby quilt sizes, throw blanket sizes, and I could make it work on that machine. Maybe it wasn't the best looking quilting, but it still gave me practice. I was still able to try out different designs that I may wanna do on a larger pro projects when I was able to do those. It may helped me learn a lot. Using what we have now, also can bring a lot of joy of getting projects finished, doing something that you didn't think you could do or accomplish. So jump in. I promise you, you will have fun and learn something with each project that you finish. So get started on that project that you've been putting off today. Go ahead, go do it. Go do it and then tell me in the comments what you finished because I promise you'll be so proud of yourself for getting it finished. Even if it doesn't look perfect, refer back to the step before and just keep going because when you look at it in a whole, standing back, you'll be amazed at how much better it looks than you thought it would. So those are my top 10 quilts for quilting on a domestic machine. If you have any tips that I didn't mention here, please leave them in the comments. I would love to learn more. All right, you guys, thanks so much for watching and I'll see you next time. Bye.